Welcome back to the channel. I'm a surgical service instructor at a state college and at a university. And today we're diving into an essential foundation of anatomy and surgical technology. Body planes, anatomical terms, abdominal quadrants, surgical approaches, and a full walkthrough of the appendectomy procedure. Whether you're a surgical technology student, a healthcare learner, or just curious about how the human body is organized and how surgery works, this video will give you a clear and structured overview. Let's get started. To understand any medical or surgical procedure, we begin with body planes, the imaginary lines that divide the body. We have the transverse plane, which divides the body into upper and lower sections. The mid-sagittal plane, which splits the body into right and left halves. And the frontal plane, dividing the body into front and back. Directional terminology helps us describe locations in the body. Superior means toward the head. Inferior means away from the head. Anterior refers to the front of the body, while posterior refers to the back. We also describe movement. Adduction brings a limb toward the midline. Abduction takes it away. Next, we divide the abdomen into four quadrants. Right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and left lower quadrant. Each contains specific organs. For example, the right upper quadrant contains the liver and gallbladder, while the left upper quadrant includes the stomach and spleen. The right lower quadrant is home to the cecum and appendix. This is important for appendectomy procedures. The left lower quadrant contains the descending and sigmoid colon. We can also use a more detailed nine region system, including the epigastric, umbilical, hypogastric, and three regions on each side. This helps pinpoint where pain or pathology may be located. The body cavities protect our internal organs. The dorsal cavity includes the cranial and spinal cavities, while the ventral cavity houses organs of the thoracic and abdominal pelvic regions. Inside the thoracic cavity, you'll find the right and left pleural cavities and the pericardial cavity surrounding the heart. The abdominal pelvic cavity contains organs of digestion, reproduction, and elimination. General surgery involves procedures on organs such as the stomach, pancreas, colon, liver, and more. Understanding anatomical relationships is essential before learning surgical steps. Instruments include major and minor sets, biliary tract instruments, laparoscopic tools, and retractors such as the Balfour and Bookwalter. These tools allow surgeons to visualize, access, and work within the operative field. Surgery may be performed using endoscopic, laparoscopic, robotic, or open approaches depending on the case and patient condition. Common incisions include the midline, paramedian, vantage steel, McBurney's, and more. Each incision provides access to specific organs while balancing exposure with healing and cosmetic outcomes. An appendectomy removes the appendix, typically due to appendicitis, an inflamed or infected appendix. Diagnosis often includes physical exam, CT scan, and lab tests. The procedure can be performed laparoscopically or as an open surgery. The appendix is attached to the cecum in the right lower quadrant, often at McBurney's point, one third of the way from the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus. It receives blood from the appendiceal artery, a branch of the ileocolic artery. This artery runs through the mesoappendix, which must be carefully divided during surgery. The mesoappendix is a small fold of peritoneum that attaches the appendix to the ileum and cecum. It is important to recognize the cecum, ileum, ileocecal valve, PSOAS muscle, and right ureter 
especially when anatomy varies or the appendix is retrocecal or pelvic. A laparoscopic appendectomy generally includes creating pneumoperitoneum, placing ports, visualizing and exposing the appendix, dividing the mesoappendix, transecting the appendix, removing the specimen, irrigating and inspecting the area, closing the port sites. Each step uses specialized instruments such as trocars, a laparoscope, Babcock graspers, staplers, clips, and a specimen bag. In an open approach, the surgeon makes a McBurney or Rocky Davis incision, enters the peritoneal cavity, identifies and delivers the appendix, ties off the mesoappendix, removes the appendix, irrigates, and closes the wound. Now that we've gone through the anatomy and procedural steps, let's talk about something that truly separates a good surgical technologist from a great one, anticipation. In surgery, anticipating what the surgeon needs before they ask for it keeps the case running smoothly, reduces operative time, and enhances patient safety. So let's break down what you should prepare for during an appendectomy. First, always confirm whether the procedure will be laparoscopic or open. This affects everything, your setup, your instruments, and the pace of the case. If it's an open appendectomy, immediately think McBurney's or Rocky Davis incision, Army Navy retractors, Babcock or Alice clamps, ties, ligatures, and suture for stump inversion. If it's a laparoscopic case, your mindset shifts. What are the port sizes? Do we need a 10 to 12 millimeter umbil umbilical cord port? Do we have both five millimeter and 10 millimeter trocars ready? This is also a great time to quickly review the anatomy and instrument list if you're unfamiliar with the surgeon's style. Even a 30 to 60 second review on your phone beforehand can make a dramatic improvement in how smoothly you assist. Watch a quick video of the procedure. One of the best habits you can develop is watching a short procedural video, even at one and a half times speed before the case. This gives you a visual idea of where the surgeon's hands will be, the order of instrument usage, the variations that might arise, and it prepares you for common surgeon requests like Babcock to grasp the cecum or give me an atraumatic grasper. Knowing what's coming next helps you stay calm and confident especially when the appendix isn't immediately visible or when it's retrocecal and hiding behind the cecum. Anticipate the need to retract the cecum. In almost every appendectomy, especially laparoscopic, you'll be helping expose the appendix by retracting the cecum. So what does that mean for you? Have a babcock or a traumatic grasper on standby. Make sure your left hand knows where suction is, just in case. Be ready to adjust quickly because the surgeon might reposition multiple times until the appendix comes into view. If the appendix is retrocecal, you may hear, can I get a little more retraction or rotate that up for me? This is when your steady hand and readiness really make a difference. Be ready for mesoappendix control. The mesoappendix contains the appendiceal artery, which must be controlled smoothly and safely. The surgeon may also choose a stapler, clips, cautery, or a combination. Your job is to know what they typically prefer and to have alternatives ready if needed. If your surgeon uses clips instead of a stapler, always have a clip applier loaded with two clips ready to go. If they use an endo GIA stapler, confirm. Correct reload color, usually white or blue, correct size, that it's functioning before you hand it off. This level of anticipation shows that you're thinking two steps ahead, something surgeons value tremendously. Prepare for appendix-based transection. This is one of the most delicate parts of the procedure, separating the appendix from the cecum. The surgeon may use a stapler, endo loops, a hand-tied ligature in open cases. If endo loops are used, always pass them one at a time on a grasper. And remember the rule, two loops proximal, one loop distal. This ensures a secure closure and avoids contamination. Being calm and steady handed here is crucial. This is where the appendix is officially removed. Anticipate specimen handling. 
before the surgeon even removes the appendix. You should already have your specimen pouch open and ready. The handoff must be smooth and contamination free. If the appendix is ruptured or perforated, prepare for extra laparotomy sponges, additional suction, increased irrigation, possible cultures. A drain, rare, but always be prepared. This is where your awareness and preparation protect both the surgical field and the patient. Ready for irrigation and final inspection? When the appendix is out, surgeons often irrigate the area to reduce infection risk. Anticipate requests such as warm irrigation, suction here. Let's take another look at the stump. Make sure your suction isn't clogged. Flush it between uses. A clean view helps the surgeon ensure there's no bleeding or contamination. Anticipate port removal and closure. As the case wraps up, your attention turns to closure. Ports 10 to 12 millimeters usually require facial structure, so have 0 to 2 o vicral needle drivers, adsids, ready on the Mayo stand. Skin closure varies by surgeon, monocryl, nylon, staples, skin glue. Having all options available keeps the pace steady and the workflow efficient. Although most of appendectomies are laparoscopic, conversion to open can happen at any time. Possible triggers include poor visualization, severe inflammation, rupture, unexpected anatomy. So always know exactly where the open instrument set, drapes, and retractors are located. If conversion is called, your quick action is critical. Anticipate variations in anatomy. And finally, no two appendixes are exactly alike. You may encounter a pelvic appendix, a retrocecal appendix, a subhepatic appendix, adhesions wrapping around the area. These variations change what tools the surgeon needs and how the case proceeds. Watch the surgeon's cues. Are they reaching higher? Are they retracting differently? Are they searching the C cup more carefully? Your job is to anticipate the next instrument or removal before they even speak. So those are the top 10 anticipation strategies every surgical technologist should master for an appendectomy. Being prepared, staying attentive, and thinking ahead transforms you from a helper into a reliable surgical partner. These skills not only make procedures safer, they build trust, confidence, and efficiency in every operating room you step into. Thank you for joining us today for this general surgery overview, including an appendectomy. This is one in a part in a series. We're going to do a few more, some cholecystectomies, um, some other general surgeries. Uh, but if you're looking for a resource, surgicaltechreview.com has all the surgical procedure questions to start studying. This is a website that I developed as an instructor. And also, I also have all of the slides from this presentation listed under visual resources on surgicaltechreview.com. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe and like, and uh, we'll see you next time for part two.